Hello YouTube. I thought I would do this little video on my Buffalo Link Station Duo. Um, I love this device. It's a network attached storage device. Um, you can look on YouTube. There's all kinds of videos out there telling you what they do and what, you know, all the benefits of having them. And um, I love this thing. I bought it about four years ago and when it came it came with two drives you can see them there and uh, each drive is 500 gig and I have them set up as RAID 1 so what happens is there's only 500 gig of storage but whenever I save a file to this drive, slot A, slot 1, the little computer copies it, also copies the exact same image to drive number 2. I know that this is 1 and this is 2 because when you take these drives out, there's a label on these little clips that says 1 and 2. So that that's set up as RAID 1. If you have it set up as RAID 0, there would be 1 terabyte of storage, but you wouldn't have the benefit of the automatic backup. Now what makes this um, RAID 1 valuable is, in this case you can see that uh, drive number 2 is red. So there's an error. This drive has finally failed after four years. And so I'm only running on one drive. You can see that the air light is blinking here, telling me that there's a problem. Now in addition to this failing, uh, over four years I've filled this up. This is at 92% capacity, so I also have a... It's time to make them bigger. So what I did was, I went out and I purchased... These two drives. And you can see that they're 3 terabyte. So I'm going to upgrade this machine from 500 gig to 3 terabyte. Now there's a couple ways I could do this. Um, none of them which really save you, in my opinion anyway, save you time. Uh, they're, they're all going to basically take the uh, same amount of time, really. Now one thing I could do is, I could just simply copy the data to a PC, so I could just basically copy it off of this over the network to a PC or another device but that means I would have to have a device that's 500 gig or bigger to hold it and but if I had that I could copy it over just pull those two drives out put the new ones in boot it the Buffalo would partition the three terabyte and then I would copy all the data back to the device um, of course, the problem with that is having 500 gigs somewhere to, to copy it to. Um, the other thing I could do is I could pull the drives out, and if I had another PC, let's say like a Linux box, I could maybe mount this in the Linux box, uh, put the two new 3 terabytes drives in here, boot it up, let the Buffalo configure it, and then um, basically copy it from the Linux box back to it. But today what I thought I'd show you is how to basically copy a 500 gig to a 3 terabyte gig. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is show you the steps to put a bigger drive in here so this will this will be my 500 gig this will be my three terabyte gig i'll configure this 
3 terabyte when I get it in there and I'll copy the data to it. Once all the data is on there, I'll pull this drive out, put the three, the second 3 terabyte drive in there, configure it, and then copy the data from this one to this one. And then once it's all, both of these are both 3 terabyte, then I'll expand the file system so that all the 3 terabyte can be used. It's, um, it's a lengthy process, uh, just so you know I've already done it. Um, and then after I did it, I thought I should, maybe I should put this on YouTube. Um, I've already done it. It's a lengthy process, uh, but quite frankly, I mean, copying the data across the network or, you know, is, is just as, just as lengthy. Um, the other thing you should know is that, um, and I'll get into this, but in order to do this, you have to be able to log into this, log into this device. So, um, I'm going to show you how to do that too, but you're going to log into this device as root and you, you know, just so that you're aware that you can basically destroy this if you run the wrong command and you don't slow down and pay attention to what you're doing. So, um, anyway, so let's get started. So before we start, I thought I'd show you this. Uh, this is the NAS, the Buffalo NAS Navigator 2 software. This is the model of my Link Station Duo that I have. And like I say, it's probably about four years old. You can see here that I have it almost full. We're at about 92% full on the drive. Um, the firmware that the device has is the latest firmware 1.68. Um, you probably should upgrade your firmware before you attempt to do this. And the software of this piece that I'm using right here is version 2.74. So I wanted to show you that first of all. And you can see also that I have these configured as RAID 1 already. It's been like that for four years. And um, uh, that, that provides us with some amount of protection. For example, that uh, broken drive that's in there. Okay, and you can see when I, there's an I here meaning there's information, and you can see there that the RAID array is in a degraded state because that second drive is broke. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what you need to log into the Buffalo to that uh, link station. Alright, so this is how you can log into your uh, link station as root. Now you need this group of files right here. These are some Java programs. If you Google this ACP commander, you'll find the link from Buffalo Technologies on where that is and how to get it. Now I'm using a um, Linux box to get to the Buffalo. So what you're looking at here is a um, Linux box that I have set up. I use it for development work. And um, I, I just simply copied this file. There's no installation. It's just you copy this file. Now this allows you to run some to send some commands to the Buffalo to be executed. And I've put each of those commands that you need in a shell script and I just run the shell script. And I'll show those to you. So here is the shell, the inside of the shell script. And this is setting an environment variable. So this is the IP address on my network of the Buffalo this is the admin password 
when the buffalo comes to you the default password is password unless so if you changed it you'll need to make this something you know whatever you changed it to this will be the root password once these commands down here run uh, this will be the password of root that you can log into and then here's where we start doing the work so the first thing that happens is on this Linux box we run jar Java we pass in the jar file these are the the executables uh, the Java code and we say go connect to our Buffalo at this IP address um, the password is password and we are going to change the root password to hope one two three that's what that's saying right there so that's the first thing we do is we basically send a command using Java to the Buffalo saying the root password is going to be hope one two three all right the second thing we do is we send a command to the Buffalo and we tell it that we don't want it using the PAM login security checking for secure shell so that's what this does so this basically turns that from yes to no from yes oops from yes to no okay so it just goes to a config config to this config file and turns that off then we run again and we we tell it it's okay for someone to log into the Buffalo from a remote location meaning from and we're going to log into it from this Linux box um, this is another security thing that we use to someone that's going to be using root on a machine has to be standing in front of the machine you know most of our machines are in a secure data center so by limiting root to the console the person would have to be standing in front of the machine to get root um, so this turns it off so that we can re log into the Buffalo remotely as root and we're going to remote log in from this uh, terminal window and then the final thing we do is we send a command to the Buffalo saying okay restart your secure shell daemon so that it picks up these changes that we made all right so that's what that does now you could run each of those by hand and I just put them in a shell script so I don't have to run them by hand I can run the shell script and it'll run them all for me and I do that by doing this so I just run this shell script so it's doing each of those Java th things in order um, don't you don't need to worry about these errors uh, because they're well, I guess you'd worry about them if you can't log in how about that uh, but but they're th that's meaningless so then to log in or here let me clear the screen get all the mess out so so now we want to log in we should be able to log in so I'm going to secure I'm going to SSH as root on the Buffalo now you could in, in my Etsy host file I have Buffalo configured you could put the IP address of your Buffalo here if if you don't have it in your host file so that's the link station given me a password prompt and remember we made it hope one two three because we hope it works and there we are we are on the Buffalo link station as root now I'm gonna tell you this again you run the wrong command and you can really screw up your Buffalo so don't run the wrong command don't do this don't do this and ruin screw up your machine and then bitch at me because you ruined your machine you know just don't do this and then you won't ruin your machine so that's um, that's how you uh, get into the Buffalo now at this stage we can begin to um, play around with our drives and 
because there's some things we need to do to figure out um, how to set up our drives. So the the first command I'm going to run on the Buffalo is the fdisk command with the minus L option. And that tells, that just says to fdisk, list out my devices. And you can see here that SDA, uh, dev SDA, so this is slot one, which I showed you earlier, and this is slot two, the B. So um, this doesn't say, you know, you know, it makes sense, right? If this would be a one and this would be a two, or if it'd be labeled inside the drive A and B. But so this is slot one A and slot two B, A and B. The drive inside is a 500 gig drive, and this is how the hardware inside of it is configured. Okay, and this is the device. And it'll show you that the, the other drive is exactly the same. But then we see this weird thing right here. Now what this means is that FDisk was not used to create the partitions on these drives. Uh, part the uh, There's another partitioning software that works on drives that are larger than 200 and 50 gig I think 250 gig so this so parted was used to create the partitions on this drive that means we can't use this to do our work we have to use parted okay that's what that means so that's the first thing we learned so alright so we're gonna use parted now we could say um, we, we know that uh, we now know there's two devices A and B so we can tell parted go read A for us and we can say print out the partitions so here we go here's the first um, clue of how the partitions are laid out and we can see that this Buffalo created six partitions that's what these are and he, these are where they start these are where they end, this is the size, this is the type, and these are all primary. So when we put in the three terabyte drives, we have to use Parted to create a GPT label on that new drive, and we have to create six partitions that look exactly like this, except for looky here. See this one here, the sixth partition? This is where all the personal files and thing, your movies and all that, your songs and all that stuff. That's where that's the partition that this is being put at. Okay. So we have to, when we put in the three terabyte, we're going to create a partition table of GPT, and we're going to create these six, and they're going to be exactly like these six, except when we do the three terabyte, we're going to say. We're gonna we're gonna make this last one as big as the what's remaining on the drive. So so we take advantage of all the three terabyte. Okay. Now, one of the issues here is that um, this isn't really we're missing some information here, or we could potentially be missing some information here, because th this is good. This tells us that we have to create an X ext3 here and an XFS here, um, but what about these other guys? So one of the things we can do is with parted, see we're still in the parted program. See this, we're still in the parted program. Th these are all the devices, so this is, our, this is our hard drive in slot one, this is our hard drive in slot two, this is the one that's blinking red, um, I have no idea what this is, and maybe somebody can comment and say what this is. I have no idea. Now these here are important, and you're going to want to write these down, because these are your arrays. Now if, if you remember, I showed you I have mine configured as array 1. Now we don't actually create these devices 
uh, there's another tool that will create these for us but we need to know about these so it would be good to take a look at them so we're going to say select dev md0 and you and again we're still in the parted program we're not out at the root prompt we're at we're still inside the program so we're going to select that and we're going to say print that out and it'd probably be a good idea to to basically write down this table up here write all this down up here that I showed you. here let me scroll up you you're probably going to want to write oops sorry about that you're probably going to want to write all this down so on a piece of paper just write all this down because when you when you start going through these if it, um, if, if you already have a RAID 1 set up, you're going to have these. You're going to want to write these down too, because these are going to give you clues to what's going on. Right? And I can tell you already that um, this is one, one, uh, one gig, and this is one gig. This is XT3, and this is XT3. Right, so that matches that partition up there. So let's look at another one. Select uh, let's look at the next one. See it's um XT three two. This one is five gig. So that's gonna be important to know. And oh, see, this is real important. This is our Linux swap area. It's one gig. So if we scroll back up here and we look for one gig, we know it isn't this one because this is XT3 and we already found that one. It's this one here. It's it's partition five up here. See, this is that five gig. This was MD one right here. But the one we're looking at right now, one gig. This is the Linux swap. So when we when we um, when we put in that three terabyte drive, we're going to want to make partition five the Linux swap area. So you're going to want to write all this stuff down. When, you, when you're going through this and carefully analyzing this because the partition has to be the exact same start and end, same size, same file system, same type, same type, same name. It's got to be the same so that the, the system will copy partition to partition. And then finally if we look um, and see here's that so this is that XFS file system this so this is where all of our uh, personal files are stored now this is the one where you'll make it as big as your drive the remaining space of your drive when we do this okay so so on a piece of paper I wrote all this stuff down so that when I put in my three terabyte drive, I can create my partitions exactly as they're needed. Now to exit this, we quit out of parted. So now we're, we've just exited the parted program and we're back at the Buffalo root. To get out of there, we exit. And now I'm back on, on my Linux box. All right, so now we have the partition information we need. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to shut down the buffalo with the switch on the back, shut it off. I'm going to pull the second drive out and put in the three terabyte drive. So now we've put in, we've taken out that 500 gig drive and we put in the three terabyte drive and it's going to show it's going to show an error red light don't worry about it 
it's okay we know we stuck a different drive in there um, in my case it was red already anyway because that second drive was going had gone bad anyway but um, in yours if you're you know if you start off with two clean drives and you're going to upgrade like this you put in that three terabyte it's going to go red but don't don't worry it'll um, it'll be fine when we get done now we rebooted the Buffalo we shut it off and then we turned it back on so it rebooted so all of that that we did earlier by running this shell script those Java commands have been reset so every time you reboot the Buffalo box you gotta rerun those so we're gonna rerun those and now we should be able to log into the um, Buffalo and our password was hope123 because we hope it works and there we are so we back we log back in so now we want to create the partitions because remember we wrote all that stuff down so we're going to create the partitions and we're going to we have to use parted and we know that it's the B drive because it's in the second slot that's where the three terabyte drive is it the three terabyte drive we put into the second slot which is B and if we print right here see so it knows that that's a three terabyte drive now as I said when I started this that I had already done all this and then I thought well I should put this on YouTube you can see that I already created the partitions so the first thing you do is in part it you run make label so here's the help for make label and you would run make label GPT so here here are your label types that you can use one of them is GPT so um, when when you put in your drive you won't see this will be empty in fact there will be there, this it won't even show you this because you haven't done a label yet so the first thing you'll do is you'll run make label GPT and that will tell it that I'm doing a um, GPT partitioning okay then the next thing you will do is um, after you've run that you, you'll make your partitions so here's the help for um, make partitions now this doesn't work because um, parted doesn't su really support this so we'll have to fix that later so what we're going to concentrate on is simply making um, the partitions so we would do that by saying make part remember now we saw that it was primary see this uh, part type one of the choices is primary and what we wrote down was primary so that's what we're going to use we're going to skip this parameter because like I could say uh, parted doesn't like that but we are going to give it the start and the end and we're going to say it just exactly um, like we saw it when we wrote it down so in our case it was 1049 KB and 1026 MB okay and we're gonna do this for each of those and we're gonna type it just we're gonna use it so make sure you type it just exactly like you read it and wrote it down so when we read it it was small K capital B so that's how we're gonna type it so when you write it down on your paper write it exactly as you saw it and type it exactly as you saw it so that's going to make partition one and then we're going to do that six times so we're going to do that six times one two three four five six now when you get to number six you're going to put in the size of your drive so that your endpoint when you do number six 
Oh, so right, one through five is exactly the same. When you get the number six, the start point is going to be exactly the same. But on the end, you're going to put the size of your drive. And you're going to create those six partitions. Okay? Now, we have to fill this in. So now that we have the six created, we need to fill this in. So in order to do that, you have to quit out of Parted and get back to this. And you're going to run, you're going to run this program right here. to create this, to put this on here. All right, so you run makefs, ext3, and you, now you gotta pay attention now what you're doing, so, because it's, the B means it's the slot, slot two, drive two, partition one. See that? So the B is, just like we saw before, B meant the second drive. The one means partition one. We're going to make that EXT3. All right. All right. So that's the program we're going to run for the next one because we want to do this. So we're going to say make fs xfs dev sdb6. Again, make sure you put <laughs> make sure you put a b there and that you're saying partition 6 so that we can make this an xfs. Okay? And you're going to run that. That's going to take a while cuz that's a big area. So that's going to take some. It's going to take some time to make that F XFS. So don't get in a hurry. Just sit back. It'll finish, but that'll take some time. And then when that's done, we're going to make our swap area. Now, when I did my drive. The one thing that the one make file system that did work in Parted was the Linux swap area. So I actually made the Linux swap area from my version of Parted. But the reason why I'm showing you it this way is your version of Parted on your device may not support uh, file systems because they removed all that file system stuff out of Parted. Uh, later on, so if if it you know if you have the version that you can do it like I did, um, great. You can use that. I did. If you have a version that doesn't support that, then you'll want to use this um, program right here, and it's the same. You would run that. Now remember, same thing. I'm telling you again. You're working on the second drive B. And here we want partition 5. And we want partition 5 because when I analyze my partition of the 500 gig hard drive, that's how things lined up. So, you know, yours might be different. So you have to pay attention to what you're doing. While, while I have you here, I just want to point out that these are 1 gig, 3 and 4 are 1, I'm sorry, not gig. Th partitions three and four are one meg areas that the buffalo uses for something unique. Um, I don't know what it's for. Um, it might just be a separator to to get a two meg buffer on the disk between uh, this partition and where our stuff starts. I'm not sure. So I'm not sure what those do, but they have to be there because they were there on the 500 gig. Okay. So now that we've, 
um, you've done all that, then you probably should go back into parted. Let's see. On the second drive. So after you've done all this, you probably should go back in here and print it out and just make sure that you did in fact do everything right and check everything. Check everything. And make sure that all these numbers are correct, that everything looks exactly like you wrote on your paper from the 500 gig drive. And if you um, you know, have a question, you can select the A drive and print that out and compare them. You know, you can do this. See, A is the first drive. So you can select that and print. Print. And you and compare them. Okay. Now, on my A drive, of course, I have already because I told you I already did this, so I have my three gig in there. Now, after you do that, actually, now we need to get the. Um, RAID configured. And you're going to use this command to do that. And what you do now is you run mdadm a dev md0 dev sdb1 because if you remember, we went through all those and we got those all, when we wrote it down, we matched this from inside parted. Remember in parted D, part, parted, we partitioned, you know, we uh, mapped this to this. So um, hopefully you wrote that all down. But that, the, these are what you wrote down from the 500 gig hard drive. And we saw that zero is mapped to one, right? And you'll run this. Now this is going to run quickly because that's a small um, that's a small file system. It's only one gig, so that's going to run relatively fast. So basically, what that's going to do is that's going to map partition one of our new drive to uh, this portion of the RAID. So you're going to run that. That's going to run fairly quick. Then you're going to do the next one. And in, and in my case, when I wrote it down, this is what it was. So I'm going to map partition 2, which is the 5 gig, to MD1. All right. Now that's going to run just a little bit longer because, you know, it's 5 gig, not 1 gig. But when it finishes, um, uh, and I'll, I'll show you that here in a second. So after that, after you run that, then you're going to run because that's what I wrote down. Now this this was that uh, swap area. It's one gig in size, and that's going to map MD10 to the swap area. You're going you're gonna to hit enter and execute that. And then finally, the big one is this big area. Because remember now, when we looked at all those, we saw that 2 mapped to 6, partition 6. Now this one's going to run 
in in my case it ran for three hours it took three hours to complete it runs in the background so after you hit the enter key it'll come back you'll get your prompt immediately and you can set up the next one um, to, and I'll, what I'll show you now is how to look at um, how, to, how to watch it run so you'll know when it's done and I'll, and I'll show you that here in a second so we're at a we're at the point where we kicked off all those MD ADM commands if you remember those and they're they're running in the background so now you want to see you, you can't do anything else until those complete so you have to leave this alone and let it run until these are complete until it's finished building these um, raids these arrays oops MD2. So if you want to see how far along it is, um, you can run this. And you can, see, you know, this is kind of a bad example, but because this is clean and everything's in sync. But what you would see down here on um, our second drive is this would say, you know sinking you know like it's rebuilding it this would show active this would because this is our first drive this is still that 500 gig that's still in there um, but this three terabyte drive that we're sinking this this will show you that it's working on it and it'll show you the percentage um, complete how how far along it is so you just um, will have to hang out and you have to wait until it's done and you'll you'll of course you'll run this um, for all of them to make sure that they're all clean and that they're active and that they're that that they're in sync because you can't do anything else now until this these are all showing that everything's cool so once they all look like that they're all clean they're all active and sync um, now you're ready to do the next to do the next step which is to we have to shut off the um, we have to shut off the the link station remove the first drive and in, and put in the put in the the next three terabyte drive in the first slot because now we're gonna put um, put everything that's on the first drive or I'm sorry we're gonna we're going to put everything that now is on here see because basically what we did was we copied everything from this first 500 gig to this 300 terabyte right so now the 300 terabyte has all the data on it that this has on it that this has on it so now we're going to remove this 500 gig put in the 3 terabyte we're going to do the exact same partitioning that we did on the on the first three terabyte same number same partition same type same command same everything the difference is that all your commands will have SDA in them instead of SDB all right so that's what we're going to do we're going to shut off uh, the buffalo So here's where we're at. We shut down the Buffalo. I removed the 500 gig hard drive out of slot number one, which is SDA is an Apple. I inserted the second three terabyte hard drive, the empty one, into slot number one. And I turned on the Buffalo and let it boot up. And when it booted up, so don't panic both drives are lit with red they're both red don't, don't it's okay 
don't panic because we're going to finish our little steps here so so now the buffalo's running and both of my red lights are lit and it's scary um, but now I have both three turd bite drives in there now if you've been following along with this slot number two though has all the data on it and now we're going to go through the same steps to put the data on uh, drive number one or slot number one that we just inserted so again we have to rerun because we rebooted the machine we have to run this again and now we can log in remember our password we set in that shell script was hope one two three and so here we are we're in the buffalo and now we want to work we want to now remember we want to now work on slot number one okay so you can see it's very easy to make a mistake because you could put a B there and be messing with stuff but now we want to work on slot number one so be very careful because I because I'm telling you, you can screw stuff up now let, let me also tell you this though that your two hard drives that you took out the 500 gig they still have the data on them so as long as you know they don't go bad you can always put them back in and start over and scrub the three terabytes and when I say scrub them I mean like remove all the partitioning all the all the partition stuff off of them and um, you know you could start all this again but you, you know you'll lose hours and hours of work because remember it took three hours to copy the 500 gig data all your personal files over to um, to the three terabyte so we're going to work on slot number one and of course when you say print you won't see anything on yours um, you'll see up to here probably um, so again you'll you'll do the steps just like you did last time so you'll the first thing you'll do is you'll make label GB you'll make label G PT you'll make partitions one start and in two start and in three all the way down okay just like you did on the other one you'll quit out of parted and you'll run those make FS ext threes XFS for partition six and for swap and again when you run that don't forget don't forget a you're dealing with slot a the first slot that's a very easy mistake to make so so now we're dealing with the drive and slot number one okay so don't make that mistake just slow down and take your time and think about what you're doing so you'll make all those those file systems and then you'll wind up with your three terabyte drive now in slot uh, A looking just like it did in slot B and then once again you'll run those MDAM commands Remember A, it's it's A, it's not B, because we're dealing with drive A. So run all these again. And just like you wrote them down. So zero goes with one, you know, one goes with two, ten goes with five, two goes with six. Okay, and also I've just a to remind you when you're creating your partitions for A just like you did for B you're going to use the entire drive here as your endpoint and again when you run this when you get to um, when you get to 2 you now remember now we're dealing with A when you get the tune you run this it's going to run in the background but it's going to run for three hours 
So now what's happening is it's copying all the data from the three terabyte drive in slot B over to the three terabyte drive in slot one. Okay. And again, you can you can watch that run by running um, dash dash detail for dev md2. And this time, what I'll show is that this is rebuilding, and it'll show you the percentage complete. So it'll show you because this is the drive we're working on. So this will be your three terabyte drive. It'll be using the data off of here to rebuild the A drive and you'll it'll show you a percentage complete. You have to wait for that to be done before you can go to the next step. Now once it's all done you have to do the exact same thing. You have to shut off the the buffalo, let it shut down, and when it's down then you can turn it back on and it will come back up. Okay, so after the three hours, you let this thing run for three hours or four hours or however many hours it takes yours. It took me three hours. Took mine took three hours. Uh, you check them and make sure that they're all uh, in sync. And when if they're all in sync, you shut down your buffalo. You log out and shut down your buffalo. And then I'll show you the next steps after that. So after you get it shut down, then you just turn it back on. Okay, so I'll be back. So great, we here's where we're at. We have the two three terabyte drives in the Buffalo. When I I shut it down, and after it powered down, I turned it back on and waited for it to boot up. And this time it booted up. All the red lights went out. The blue light is lit. The buffalo is happy. Okay, there's no errors, there's no info, there's none of that. Okay. So basically what we have is the buffalo is got two three terabyte drives in it. We've upgraded from the five hundred gig to three terabyte. Um, but the the problem is that we only have it able to access the 500 gig on the three terabytes. So now we want to expand it. We want to grow those file systems and tell the Buffalo, please use all of the remaining partition that I gave you. Because remember, when we created that partition, we said to the end of the drive. On partition six, we said to the end of the drive. So now we want to tell it, you, it's okay. Use it all the way to the end of the drive. So here's what we got to do. Now we. Uh, we rebooted the buffalo, so we have to we have to rerun this because remember this gets reset every time we reboot the buffalo. So we run that, and now we want to log in to the buffalo, and we made it hope one two three because we hope it works. Yes, so there we are. So now if we run Parted, and we're looking at the first drive, and there it is, and there's uh, three terabyte. It's um, three, almost, almost three terabytes in size. And there's that one. They look exactly the same. And um, we run our detail on our big, this is MD, MDT2, remember was pointing at this. This is where all of our personal files are. And it's everything's clean and in sync and happy. So what we want to do is um, we want to run we want to grow the file system. So run this command here, the DF. And what we're looking for is, see, we have MDD2, because we know that's partition 6. That's where all of our goodies are. And we, we, we run this because we need to see what this is called right here. So the first, the first command we run is MDADM 
grow max. Okay, so this what this is telling uh, the RAID is to grow this this file system to the maximum allowed, which was the three, you know, the the three terabytes. So go to the end of so grow to the end of the disk because that's how much we gave it. So you're going to run that, and that's going to run in the background. You'll get your prompt back immediately. That's going to run in the background, right? And then you can immediately run this command. Uh, XFS grow mount array one, and we got that mount array one from from this. So this is MD two. So we got that for the first command, and and this comes from so. And you can run this immediately. You don't have to wait for the MD ADM grow to complete. Now that MD ADM grow that I just showed you, that is going to in my case that took almost 14 hours to complete. So what it's doing is it's it's basically going through the entire 3 terabyte uh, remaining area or that area that we said to use and bit by bit it's checking it and it's comparing it to the other drive. It's doing a bit by bit comparison and it's verifying that it can read and write to it and that it's clean and that it's good and that it's usable. And it's if it's finding bad spots, it's marking it and all that. Okay, so that's why it takes so long to run. Now, you can actually use your your device while all that's going on. There might be a slight um, uh, performance issue while that resyncing is working. Um, I did mine overnight and kind of had it timed out so I did it overnight and there wasn't very many hours in the morning to do but but your users can use it so they can put files out there and access files and all that because uh, it's done in the background and uh, it's really not that big of a deal right if you want to see how it's making out you can run this command cat proc MD stat this one right here and what it will show you now, mine's all complete. All of these are complete. But what this will show you is it'll actually show you a percentage up here of this being worked on. It'll show you, you know, it's 3%, it's 16.9%. And it will also tell you the estimated time. So it'll say, you know, it's 1% complete with an estimated, uh, you know, 340 minutes you know that kind of thing all right so you can use this command here to periodically look at it now you can also look on your uh, web browser for the buffalo and I'll show you that next but basically you're done you're growing the system and when it's all done so you can see that I if I run this uh, let me run that this way so you can see that um, I have available 2.3 terabytes. See, this is what's used. So if you remember when we started, that's how much was on that uh, 500 gig. Those 500 gig drives was was that for? So this is all of our personal data and our backups and all that crap. It's on there, and this is now how much is of extra space we have to put more junk out there, and. Um, everything looks great. You uh, so th just to help you out here. This you can see that. Um, see this MD MD. In case you're wondering what they put on stuff, this MD zero, which in our case was partition one, is where they put their boot image in the Buffalo and. MD1, which was that five, uh, like that five gig area, right here. See five, almost five gig, is the slash. So this is where all the operating system files are. The the 
like the commands that were running the parted and the um, MD ADM, all, all, you know, the, the, the DF, all this stuff, uh, the file system, the um, operating system commands are stored there. Uh, we already knew that MD10, which isn't shown here, was our temporary partition 5, and then uh, MD2, which is our personal stuff. Okay, so basically we're done. So we can get out and we're safely out of the buffalo. And now I'm going to show you the um, the NAS Navigator stuff. And so we finish where we began. Uh, we started off with the RAID 1 on my uh, here's the model number of my Buffalo and we started off with RAID 1 on our hard drives it was this was red because it was like at 92 percent come you know full um, we stuck in our three terabyte drives and now we're only at 15 percent and everybody's happy so there's room to grow and um, we replace that one 500 gig that picked up an error during all this is is no longer a threat and that's how you upgrade your drives from a smaller drive to a larger drive on a Buffalo link station uh, since I'm here let me just say that on these terra stations that I've seen on YouTube this process would work exactly the same on a terra station with four drives but you would start with it would be lettered a b which is what we had a b it would then have c for for the slot three d for slot four a b c d so you would start at d and you would do d you would shut off your buffalo put your three terabyte drive in c start up your buffalo and do C and do it exactly like I just showed you and then when C was done you would shut off your buffalo take out the drive out of B slide in the three terabyte drive into B start your buffalo partition B MDADM B just like I just showed you you'd shut off your buffalo take out your drive out of A slide in uh, your three terabyte into A and do A, shut it off, expand your file systems, and it's basically the same thing except you would do it four times, and it would take twice as long <laughs> because you have four drives. And you'd be remember that that AD that MD ADM dash A command takes like three hours. It, that that depends on of course how big the drives are, but um, you get the point. Okay. So I hope that helped people, and um, you have a good day.